Of all the new releases of 2021 from Rolex, the one that surprised me the most was the Sky Dweller with the Jubilee Band. <laughs> so most people are probably wondering, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, look, for me, I wasn't really sure what was the point of putting the Jubilee Band. Yes, it's been a great success on obviously the Datejust and in recent years on the sports models where they reintroduced it with the Pepsi and the Batman Jubilee. But the real question is, was it really necessary to put a Jubilee Band on this watch? I have here one of my personal favorite Sky Dweller models, which is the blue dial with the Oyster Band. I just think it's well balanced, good looking. The immediate impression that I got when I saw this in the pictures was, man, that's gonna be a really thick case for a Jubilee band. I don't know, I just initially, that's the impression I got. But like some of these releases, when you first see them, I don't know if it just grows on me or what. But look, now that I'm seeing it right here in my hand, what I do wanna say is that I don't hate it, I definitely don't hate it, but I definitely don't love it yet. It's just one of those things that for me, perhaps the Oyster Band is just the way to go. The fact that it's a blue dial for me is that one thing that just suckers me right into it. I'm not sure that I would absolutely even be doing this review had it been with the white dial. Nothing against all of you at home that want the white dial. I'm just saying, clearly the blue dial is the important one. God knows that who knows what you have to do to obtain one at retail. If you haven't followed my new YouTube channel already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now and don't miss any of the new content. So since my initial thought was that perhaps maybe the head was gonna be a little bit too thick for this bracelet, now that I have it here in person, it's actually pretty well balanced. It does not look bad. Not that it would be my first option when going for a stainless steel or two-tone Sky Dweller, but it doesn't look bad. They obviously did a good job executing the way it looks on the wrist. The thing about these watches is that when it comes to the Jubilee Band, I feel like it's a 50-50 rule. 50% 50 of the people love it, and 50% of the people don't like it. It just never seems to amaze me who likes Oyster better than Jubilee. When it comes to the new Pepsi that came out in Oyster, believe it or not, I would rather have it in Oyster over the Jubilee. Not that it wasn't a good play from Rolex for giving us finally a Jubilee band on a sports model. But I almost feel like it's just one of those things that they just said, hey, let's just slap a Jubilee on a Sky Dweller. It's a pretty easy play and something that any of us should have been able to predict. But I don't know what it is. Maybe I was just focused more on doing the rain dance, hoping that we would get a new Coca-Cola GMT on an Oyster Band. They completely blindsided me with a Jubilee Band on the Sky Dweller. I talked to many of my friends and a lot of people said it was ugly. And I, for one, said, eh, I'm not sure if I like it. Crazy part is now that it's here in my hand, it's growing on me. The blue dial, of course, is gonna be the one to get. Let's talk a little bit about the prices of these watches. If you're looking to buy a blue dial Sky Dweller in Oyster Band, you're gonna be easily right now in the high 20s, 28, 29, maybe even 30. To get one of the new 2021 Jubilees, you're gonna be anywhere from two to $4,000 over the price of the Oyster, depending on the situation and who it is that you're buying it from. So just when you thought the Blue Sky Dweller couldn't get any more expensive, enter the Jubilee. Now, the last little point that I wanna add on this whole Sky Dweller ordeal is that ever since the Sky Dweller first came out, there was one thing about the Sky Dweller that just kinda had me in limbo. It wasn't a dress watch, it wasn't a sports watch, it was kinda like in the middle. 
The one thing that I would say about the new Jubilee band is it does make it officially a lot more dressier. You know, it just gives it that full dressy look. For those of you at home that have always liked the look of the 41 Datejust on a Jubilee band, but want something that's a little bit higher up in the watch game, you know, even more up than a Pepsi Jubilee, Skydweller is gonna be it because you're well over $30,000. Till this moment, the Pepsi still has not touched that price yet. So in the watch game, this is probably going to be the hardest watch at the moment with the Jubilee Band. So comment below what you think about the new Rolex Skydweller in stainless steel with the Jubilee Band. And if you like it better than the Oyster version. And if you like this video, like and share it. Also, subscribe to my new YouTube channel.